What's up? I'm Hutch, and you need to understand PNFs so that you can better treat your patients and also pass the NPTE. When most people think of PNF, they think of those weird diagonal arm patterns, but there's actually a lot more to it, so we're going to kind of break it down so it's a lot easier to understand. The P in PNF stands for proprioceptive, which is the idea of knowing where your body is in space and it being where you want it to be. The N stands for neuromuscular, so nerves and muscles, and the F stands for facilitation or making things easier. So the idea of PNF is goals, strategies, techniques to get your body to move the way you want it to in space. So you as a therapist are facilitating or making it easier for the nerves and muscles to move in that pattern. Now this is kind of a goal for all of physical therapy, which is why PNF could be a lot more utilized than it currently is. And we're going to break PNF down into three main parts. So the first one is your motor goal, also known as levels of motor control. We have different ways that the therapist can make the exercises or activities better and more effective for the patient, and those are called levels of facilitation. And we can apply those things to techniques like slow reversals, agonistic reversals, in order to accomplish our motor goals. So for this video, we're just touching on the levels of motor control, and it may be one or a combination of a few of these that you're looking for with each activity that you're doing depending on your patient situation. The first goal is called mobility. This is the ability to not only initiate a movement but to move throughout the full range of motion. So this can be something as isolated as full range knee extension or something more functional like rolling over in bed or kicking a soccer ball. The second goal we might be working towards is stability which is the ability to hold a position maintaining a co-contraction about a joint. So this could be something like sitting unsupported or holding a plank or a handstand. The third goal is controlled mobility, which could either mean movement in a stable position, so like quadruped rocking, or rotation about a longitudinal axis, so hip external rotation, spinning on a skateboard, something like that. The final goal is skill. This is the ability to consistently perform functional tasks with normal postural reflexes and balance. This could mean something like performing ADLs or doing some return to sport activities, and it could be broken down into proximal, distal, or strength based. So those are the four goals that you're working towards and you'll notice that these are pretty broad. I think a lot of times when people think of PNF we're thinking of neurologic injuries, things like that, but this can be applied to any injury or illness that your patient has, whether they're trying to work on bed mobility or returning to sport. Now it's time for NPT Jeopardy! Pause the video now if you want time to read and think about the question. Otherwise you've got five, four, Three, two, one. This is an important piece of PNF work and can be combined with mobility. Proximal stability is necessary for any distal mobility, or it can be something like weight bearing on a joint after surgery. Hopefully that covers all of our bases. If not, feel free to check out the description box below for a link to my notes on Etsy. Otherwise, comment with questions or suggestions for videos I should do in the future. Good luck studying. Go change the world.